Okay. By all the power of land and sea, by all the might of moon and sun, as I do will, so mote it be. Chant the spell and be it done. So mote it be. Merry meet and welcome to the Academy of Arcana. I'm Oberon Zell Ravenheart and this here is Gomez. He's our shop dragon. He's a bearded dragon and um, very friendly. Well, this is one of many, many pictures of Morning Glory. This one was taken in April of 1994 in Santa Cruz. And uh, right here where we are now. I've got boxes of pictures, but the best ones are all naked, so they probably won't be useful for this. <sighs> Morning Glory died three years ago on um, May 14th, or sorry, May 13th. It was the night, it was 2014. At home, she had fought uh, a terrible cancer. She lay in grace for three days with her sword in her hand. She was a swordswoman. She was a pirate queen. That was the, where the queen part came from. She was very well known in the local community of, of pirates and Renaissance fair folks. We're, we're pagans, so she's ascended to goddesshood. And um, that's, uh, she's become really huge. The, the last message that I got from her was that she was heading up the welcoming committee over on the, on the other side there for all the pagans who pass over. And, they, and she'll keep on doing that and not reincarnating until I can join her so we can come back together. And back here through the TARDIS. is the Sanctum Sanctorum, the Museum of Mysteries. Well, Morning Glory and I were really interested in mythical beasties and critters, and we started research back in the mid-70s for a book that we wanted to write on the subject, and in the process of that, we discovered the secret of the unicorns, that they had really existed, and uh, that there was a secret technique that was used for creating them in ancient times that was kept closely guarded. And when we figured this out, we said, you know, let's set the book aside and see if we can actually raise unicorns, which is what we did throughout the entire 1980s. Our first unicorn was born in 1980, and this is the skull of one of our first unicorns. And that was long ago, and they had many adventures, and eventually went off and joined the circus. So this is a unicorn skull, and the horn, as you can see, grows from the center of the forehead and it grows perpendicular. And the thing is, we figured out that unicorns were a multi-species phenomenon. But the classical one that we set out to reproduce from the tapestries is clearly derived from a goat. I mean, cloven hooves and the bearded chin and the tufted tail, and the, if you look carefully at it, the eyes and the nostrils are all very quite distinctly. And this is one of uh, two sets of quite a few tapestries which are life-size and very detailed and very realistic, and all the information is in the tapestries. The trick was to figure out how it was done, and we found out that people were, in ancient times, realized that the horns don't just grow out of the skull. They are, in fact, produced by enzymes that are dropped from nodes that are in the loose flesh of the forehead when a, a baby horned animal is born. And if you get them within a few hours of birth and manipulate that tissue, to bring those two nodes together in the center of the forehead, when the enzymes are dropped, they all drop in one spot. And a single horn grows from that spot, and it cancels out the natural curvature and changes everything because the, the, the whole structure of the skull, the brain, the neck muscles of, of them become powerful to support the weight of the horn in front instead of over the back. The shoulders become more powerful, so they don't really look like, you know, um, the parent animal. I mean, here, here's you know, that does not really look like a goat with a horn, you know. But there were so many ways in which magic was applied to this. The very work that we did with them was filled with all kinds of special magical things and in circles and and wands and everything. It was all all charged. Um, the the whole process. We slept with them in our beds. We couldn't just turn them loose when they were babies because they had to be really domesticated because they could be quite dangerous.